Okay, here's a quick little tutorial video about how to use Auto Stack It 2. There are a bunch out there, but I uh, just wanted to give a really quick overview. Um, I'm going to be stacking a picture of the moon here based on this video. So when you're taking your video, uh, this is the red channel here of the moon, and um, zoomed in pretty close, but you want to make sure that your tracking is nice and consistent. So you can see that uh, in this video, the moon stays where it is. I do have a little bit of drift, um, but it's not too bad. It's not bouncing around. You really want to make sure your, your polar alignment is uh, nice and um, accurate so that your video is, is also consistent. If it's not consistent, you can use other programs like PIPP, uh, which will help align things for you. But really, you just want to make sure your acquisition stage is as um, clean as possible. So I'm just going to close this video out now and we'll jump straight into auto stack it. That's what you see when you open the program, you get these two windows here. And we could click open and browse the video. I'm just going to drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag and drop this straight onto the open. And you'll see in this second window it opens up. You might get a little bit of a red edge, um, which is a bit confusing at first. And it just means... Um, that there has been a little bit of drift in your video and so it's it's trying to compensate for that. Um, you see the width and the height estimate in here. If you want, if you're worried about that red edge, you can drag up, drag the width up or down to compensate for it. But the the wider you go, the more the more uh, pixels you're gonna have to process and it's gonna take longer. Um, usually the, the first the first estimate the program makes is pretty good. Um, now the first thing we do, in this case, it, we're going to choose between surface and planet because we're not doing a, a planet as such, we're not doing a round um, video. We're just going to click on surface and you'll see that red disappears because it's, it's, it's reassessed uh, what we're trying to do here. But you get this green box here. Now this is the uh, image stabilization anchor. So it's the, the point in the um, frame that it's going to align everything from frame to frame. So pick a nice, small, but bright spot. So I'm going to pick this one here. So I'm going to go control click. And it's too close to the edge, so it's not letting me go there. So I'm going to pick one maybe here. This one looks pretty good. And that's going to align each frame as it goes through. So the next thing we do, um, everything else here you can leave pretty much as it is. It'll be fine. I hit the analyze button. Now that will go through every frame and analyze the quality of each frame and the next thing we get is a little graph which will show us the quality of the frames here. So let's just let this run through. The speed at which this happens will depend on how many frames you have, how long the video is, the resolution of the video and of course your memory and processor speed. You can bump up the memory usage in this uh, this little area here in this menu. And, uh, that should cut through it pretty quick. There we go. Now we get this quality graph. Now this is important to, to understand. You can see that the quality bounces up and down and up and down. So here maybe it was a bit windy or Maybe the seeing dropped as a cloud passed over, so it got really bad, but then it got really good again. And there are a few peaks here where the quality is pretty good. So what we want to do is shave off all the stuff that's bad and keep all the stuff that's good. So this graph, this, this green line here, has ordered those, um, those frames by quality from high to low. So if we were to take the first 25%, that would just be this bit here and it quickly drops off after that. Uh, let's go half of that, let's just say about 12%. So in this here where it says um, number of frames or percentage, I would prefer to use a percentage, I'm going to go 12%. Now the next thing we need to do is to jump over to this window and it needs to draw some alignment points on here. I'll just use the the default and go place and we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be way too many. So here it's like 20,000. Look at that. That's just ridiculous. That will take days. So I'm going to make the AP size bigger, maybe 100. 
and the minimum brightness I'm going to bump that up a bit and we're going to go place APs again Let's see what it gets 492 that's pretty good they're not hitting the edge um, yep it's staying within the the object itself that's not so bad it's probably a bit of overkill really I don't need that many um, I'm going to bump it up to 200 just for the sake of the video yeah there we go now we've only got 121 and that's fine that'll be enough to uh, to stack this image so I'll jump back over to this second you know first window um, I like to have it gives you two two files when we finish stacking these one will be sharpened and one will be unsharpened um, it's a deconvolution that it uses for the, the sharpening and I like to blend in raw 50% which means it takes the sharpened and blends in the unsharpened about 50% it's a pretty good result um, you can play with this if you like I also like to drizzle so the resolution is pretty good here 2000 by 1256 but if you want to say print your image in a magazine or a poster or something you probably want to drizzle it up so you got a, a few more pixels to play with when you get down to that print resolution so now I'm going to hit stack and this is going to go through and align those frames it gives you the steps here as it goes it's going to take a little while and boom it's done okay so at this point a lot of beginners with this program will go, well, what did it do? It got to the end, got to 100%, and nothing really happened. So what you'll notice is if you go back to where your images were, the folder that the original AVI was stored in, you'll see it's created another folder, um, and it, it uses the naming convention. We used um, percentage 12 to stack uh, 12 frames, 12% uh, of the frames. So it's created a, a folder here called ASP12. We go in here and we end up with the two images, one drizzled and, uh, sorry, both drizzled, but one deconvoluted or sharpened and the other not sharpened. All right, so that's the stacked but not sharpened one. And this is the stacked sharpened and mixed in 50%. So that's at 67%, but you can see up close it's it's pretty nice. We've got a little bit of noise in there, so if we had more frames to stack, we could get rid of that. Uh, but you also just want to take the best frames, so that kind of noise is not really something to worry about. It's something that a uh, denoise um, filter in Photoshop can handle pretty pretty nicely anyway. So that's it, that's how you take a, an image straight from the video, which was quite shaky and grainy, and stack it for the best results using AutoStack It 2. I hope that helped. Bye bye.